Thank you for picking this video. So what you have here is the AMT 1979-1980 release of Mr. Spock to coincide with the first Star Trek film, the motion picture. And you can see on the box art, they do a pretty good job of uh, making him look kind of like he's wearing the uniform in the film. Now I kind of say that in that funny way because this actually is a re-release of an earlier kit. They had to change some of the details around. Um, they took the phaser out of Mr. Spock's hand. They changed the uniform, obviously. They um, also removed a three-headed serpent that Mr. Spock was facing off with. And by this point, that this model was over 10 years old, actually, when they finally redesigned it to come out in honor of the first movie. And there are some holdovers in the instructions from that. You'll see that in the paint scheme, which is the big reason why I picked these things, so that I show you how the paint schemes look when they are done as the instructions tell you. Or just to complain about other kits like I do with the Star Trek Discovery model, you can see hiding in the corner of the screen over there on the right. All right here is the paint instructions. Uh, not very complicated. You see black, flesh, yellow, green, brown, gray, silver, light blue. But if you'll flash back a moment to the picture, you'll see that the, the uniform he's wearing is kind of a light grayish, gray-blue maybe, and that is not at all present on the instructions here. In fact, as you'll see in this picture, the light blue that it indicates is the color for the uniform. And I also just found it interesting, too, that they, for whatever reason, they changed it around from what the instructions were in the 1968 kit. Um, not, not for Mr. Spock. Of course, they changed those instructions because he's wearing a different uniform. But uh, for the uh, plant life down there, um, they changed some of the colors a little bit. Like the center of the plants in this model kit are yellow, but the center of the kit in the original, according to the original 1968 instructions, they're supposed to be red. Another thing to note, I did do this exactly as the instructions requested, and you see how he has, in this picture you can see them, those little braids on his uh, wrist that indicate his rank. That doesn't tell you to paint those, so I did not paint them. However, in the 1968 kit, it did tell you to paint those, so I'm not sure why they decided to skip out on that this time, but here we go. And there are, scattered through the instructions, Every so often it indicates that you should paint something such and such color before it gets to that final page that I showed you a moment ago. Now here is what the kit looks like with when it's unpainted, unassembled, comes in the standard model trees, and you can see that there's a tree on the tree. I don't think there is a tree on the tree on the tree, though. I could be wrong. I don't have a microscope. I did not like this at all. I've complained about the way that things are put on the motto trees in the past. You can see the how the these little bushes here, they have the very fine jags in their edges there, yet they have a very flat surface where they connect to the model tree, so I had to very carefully disconnect that and try and make it look kind of natural with the plants. It's not easy. As far as assembling goes, the pieces fit together pretty well, but uh, the seams really did show in some cases. So you can see them here on the head. I just glued the head together, and there's that big seam in there making it look like Mr. Spock's head is splitting apart. Some of these get covered up by paint a little bit, uh, but more advanced modelers out there, you might want to fill those in or do whatever it is you people do to make it look better. Uh, but they're tolerable once everything is painted. I'm showing this picture of Mr. Po Spock's hand to show where they modified it. Now, the phaser in the 1968 kit was in this hand, and they just kind of filled it in a little bit and made it kind of an unnatural-looking square with possibly a very enormous thumb. <laughs> it's the best they could do, though. I'm not sure why they didn't just keep the phaser, but... It's, creative choice on their part, I guess. I'm just going to add that it's very unlikely that I'm going to review the original 60s kit. The paint instruction looked kind of okay, aside from perhaps the wrong kind of blue for Spock's uniform, but that is a very expensive kit to find these days. I 
didn't see it for under like 50 or 60 dollars whereas this kit was about 40 I think when I purchased it so I'm not gonna be opening up the piggy bank for uh, that other kit anytime soon especially since I already have a Mr. Spock now sitting in my house and here's another picture of it you can see there seam going down the middle there you can't really do much about it unless again you fill it in with some clay and then sand it down or whatever there's another little aspect to this kit you can on this uh, boot there there's that little edge that's shooting off it's supposed to be a flat surface on the bottom there uh, below the rectangle the rectangle is what you insert into the base to hold the Mr. Spock in place but that kind of curvy part coming off of it that's not supposed to be there that's uh, some excess you have to cut off there's a little bit of that going on reading these paint instructions here it tells you for the base that you have to combine three paint colors to get the base going uh, for uh, I, I'm assuming just the dirt part because there's arrows pointing to the other parts there uh, the rocks and the bushes and all that but it doesn't tell you exactly what the heck you're supposed to do with those three colors. Are you supposed to mix them all together into one uber color? Are you supposed to have some parts one color, some parts the other color? It doesn't say. It doesn't say what to do. So that's entirely open to interpretation. The instructions say that if a point is unclear about how to paint the model, refer to the box. So referring to the box, it doesn't show the dirt at all. I, I just ended up choosing to paint it all brown. And then every so often I splotched a little of the other colors on there that it asked for. I, I started to paint the model while the glue was drying in some areas. So to, just to consolidate the time there. That huge base in the top left doesn't require any gluing to get to that shape. So you can cover, start covering it with the brown paint. And then wait for that to dry and go at it with the gray paint later on like I did. Uh, that way when you hold on to it while painting it gray uh, you're not thumbing into the wet brown paint it'll be nice and dry when you do it and also while i'm at it might as well paint that tree too uh, it, it, it only had one assembly point on it so paint it while the glue is drying and mr spock there is pretty easy to put together but this is all just going in on while the glue is drying so that i can consolidate how much time I'm spent on the model. Another intermediate step, this is after the gray has been applied to the base. This is how the base looks before I decided to add the little splotches of gray and green that the instructions called for. Or at least as I said, I assume the instructions called for because they weren't really clear what you were supposed to do with the gray and the green and the brown when it came to the base. So it looked so nice and clean before I dirtied it up with those other colors. I just wanted to have a nice picture of it here. And as for Mr. Spock's skin, I, I admit I didn't have any flesh on hand, whatever that color is. So I mixed it up uh, just based on what pictures of the internet tell me that flesh should look like. It seems everybody has a different idea as to what flesh looked like. So I don't know what it looked like in 1978, but this is what mine looked like. And here's Mr. Spock's head. You can... I had to use that very tiny brush you saw in the last picture to get the eyebrows and the eyes and to do a little bit around the, the ears there, some of the finer details. But looking at it from this angle, there's only one seam that's really visible going down the middle of the neck and the other seam sort of blended by the paint. So I'd say you can do pretty good without any fancy work going on. And this is Mr. Spock's headless body carrying a communicator which is strangely not any style that you see on the series or the movies. It's the original series style, but it's missing the giant gold thingy that flips open. I guess it's the space antenna or whatever. And the communicator is entirely black, according to the instructions, even though that little circle you see is actually supposed to be silver, and those tinier buttons there are supposed to be different colors as well. But the instructions just said black, so it's black. And you're also starting to see the beginnings of Mr. Spock's uniform here, the very odd color that it takes. To give you an idea of how this varies, now that you've seen part of that little preview of it, here's Mr. Spock as he appeared in the original show. You can see that that's how the uniform looks there. 
it's the right color if you wanted it to be that uniform but the trouble is it is not that uniform it's the uniform from the movie as you'll see in just a moment there are significant differences here it is in total this unique uniform that he's wearing this is not a uniform style seen in anywhere <laughs> uh the instructions said to paint him light blue so i painted him light blue and here it is side by side with the what the box shows the box is actually more accurate to the film although there's still some inaccuracies going on here for one thing that style of communicator is never used ever and for another thing the uh little arrowhead badge right above where mr spock's heart would be if he was human is actually not the style that you see in the movie it's the style from the original show if you wanted to make it like the style in the movie you just kind of paint a little circle around it or whatever with a very fine brush but they did go to a lot of trouble though to get that belt buckle in there uh, that little belt buckle medical monitor and the instructions didn't say to paint that but they didn't show it either which is interesting you don't see that really anywhere on the instructions so it never gives you a chance to even say that the instructions didn't intend for you to paint it. It left it really open for interpretation, so I just painted it black because that made it even more of a funky uniform in my opinion. Uh, definitely not screen accurate in any sense of the term. So, Mr. Spock Dunn, he is in the 1 12th scale. And this image of Mr. Spock from the side, just want to show off the detailing of the model here and how it looks from the side. But also you'll note on the base, there's that little bit of green splotches that I added there uh, in, right next to one of the plants. And then there's another splotch of green under the tree in the background. And on the other side of this, uh, from the other angle anyway, on the other side of this model, you could see a gray splotch or two as well that I threw in there just to say that I went by what the instructions said without really understanding what the heck it was they were talking about. Who knows? Maybe they didn't understand either. So now that this, he is proudly displayed aggressively pointing at something, don't know what, because they removed the what from the 1968 kit, which was a three-headed serpent that never appeared on Star Trek anywhere. Don't know what he's pointing at now, but leave it to your own imagination. I just stuck him with my other 112th scale so he can aggressively point at whatever is going on here. All right, that is it. Thank you very much for your time. And you can either get this model kit and paint Mr. Spock up right, because you know, aside, if you just add a little bit of the, the circle, like I said, around his uh, badge, maybe change what he's holding in his hand a little bit, add some clay onto it to make it into more of a tricorder shape, or if or just assume it's some other alien device altogether that we never saw in the show it, it can actually be made pretty well screen accurate the way it is just requires some attention to detail some painting that just don't follow the instructions <laughs> all right thanks for watching